Okay, uh, getting uh, started. Here are the NCCN uh, guidelines uh, just released uh, for this year. And I've highlighted the one area where PET uh, scans are approved, and that is for biochemically recurrent disease. And the two scans uh, that are considered uh, useful right now is the C11 choline and the F18 fusiclovine or FACBC scan, also known as Actiman period. Uh, there are other uh, scans uh, out there and NCCN uh, listed them uh, as a uh, topic uh, that's remaining under discussion. Under PSMA, uh, most of the data that we have is for a gallium 68 PSMA scan. However, uh, the audience I'm sure knows that there are three other PSMA scans that are in various stages of evaluation at the moment. And they may have some advantages over a, a gallium PSMA scan uh, in terms of uh, sensitivity for local recurrence, how they're excreted, and uh, so forth. But uh, for now, most of the data we have uh, relates to uh, gallium-68 uh, PSMA. Uh, just uh, at a high level, uh, when you look at all PET scans for biochemical recurrence after surgery or radiation therapy, no matter which scan you choose, the detection rate is dependent on the PSA level. What I think we know with some certainty at this point is that the FACBC Actiman scan is more sensitive than a choline scan. And that's particularly true uh, when you're searching for a local recurrence uh, in the prostate bed or in the prostate if the patient had radiation therapy. PSMA-based uh, scans are not yet approved in the United States. A lot of the data out there uh, would uh, suggest uh, that they are more sensitive at least gallium uh, for non-local recurrence sites, meaning lymph nodes uh, and uh, bones. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, any of the PET scans that uh, you could order for biochemical recurrence will alter the treatment uh, de uh, decision for that patient. Uh, however, it's also true to say that the uh, long-term outcomes of uh, these treatment decision changes are really not known, and I'll talk a little bit about that in the next couple slides. And then finally, uh, I think a topic that we all need to consider more is the question, does inter and intra metastasis heterogeneity require multiple imaging and or multiple theranostic uh, strategies? And I just have a few slides on those points. So originally, uh, as reported, you can see that uh, metastasis-directed therapy, the blue lines, uh, appeared to be, in a retrospective comparison, better than standard of care for patients uh, with uh, oligometastatic uh, uh, nodal recurrent disease. And that's uh, what engendered a lot of enthusiasm for PET scans and metastasis-directed therapy. More recently, actually just released uh, about a month or so ago, was a longer-term outcome for salvage lymph node dissection for nodal recurrence uh, prostate cancer after radical prostatectomy. The title says it all, not as good as previously thought. And you can see the biochemical recurrence rates, uh, 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 biochemical recurrence free survival really is very uh, low uh, after uh, five or six years of follow-up. Notwithstanding that it could uh, delay the uh, implementation of uh, hormonal therapy, and that in itself uh, may be a beneficial uh, step for a patient. And the other uh, point that uh, I, I think we need to uh, emphasize is that uh, just looking at PSMA alone, uh, yes, it is upregulated in many, but not all prostate cancers. I think this was a, an important study showing that at least for some patients, it gets downregulated. And there's a lot of difference in PSMA expression uh, by uh, the different metastasis sites uh, throughout the body. And finally, uh, many times a given metastasis that may have some PSA expressing cells may also contain other PSA non-expressing cells that are more than two or three millimeters away uh, from any PSMA expressing cell and that that would have some implications for beta particle therapy such as uh, lutetium. 
Okay, so what about PSMA PET scans for the diagnosis of prostate cancer? There's not a lot out there, but what is out there is a little bit promising. If you combine gallium uh, with, uh, with an MRI, it appears to be in a small study. Uh, this is from UCSF. Uh, it does appear better than MRI alone. Uh, in this study, you can see that for clinically significant cancers, the PSMA uh, uh, PET CT discovered 31 out of 34 clinically evident cancers, whereas multiparametric MRI only discovered about 17 of them. So again, very promising, uh, but uh, requires a larger series and a little more follow-up. What about staging uh, high-risk disease? Uh, so this uh, was a study done on patients who had newly diagnosed prostate cancer, uh, but had negative conventional imaging. You can see by PSA level here, the gallium PSMA PET discovered metastases in 8%. For patients with a PSA of less than 10, 15%. For men with PSAs between 10 and 20, and about 40% uh, for uh, men who had PSA levels of uh, over uh, 20. But that's a little bit of an unfair comparison because by definition, uh, PSMA PET had to be better than conventional imaging. Just reported in Lancet was a randomized uh, trial of about uh, 300 uh, patients uh, who had uh, fairly high PSA levels at baseline. Considerable proportion of them had uh, clinically advanced disease, and, and quite a number of them were in the higher uh, Gleason uh, grade uh, groupings. Uh, and what this shows is after randomization that uh, the sensitivity of uh, uh, PSMA PET, that's in the red, uh, was superior for any metastatic disease, pelvic nodal disease, distant metastases, and you can just look through the uh, columns yourself. Moreover, uh, many times conventional imaging uh, showed uh, equivocal findings, and then um, uh, with the uh, PSMA PET, there was a lower frequency of uh, equivocal uh, findings. Uh, there is a very nice review of uh, PET scans uh, in uh, Nature Reviews in Neurology, and I think these uh, are important uh, points uh, that may show some promise for staging prostate cancer. However, PSMA is not expressed ubiquitously in prostate cancer, but also importantly, it could be expressed in other solid organ mal malignancies. PSMA PET has uh, been demonstrated in both definitive and salvage uh, settings to uh, modify uh, the treatment fields if you're using radiation or to allow you to do uh, targeted uh, surgery. Uh, PSA, PSMA Theranostics uh, is under evaluation. Uh, it may be a useful imaging biomarker in assessing response to therapy. And uh, PSMA PET may have a role in uh, metastatic uh, renal cell, uh, but does not appear to be useful in urothelial cancer. Uh, and that's to be expected because of the way uh, gallium PSMA in particular uh, is excreted. So those are uh, my thoughts on uh, PSMA <clears throat> uh, PET scans. And we can certainly talk more about uh, that in the uh, discussion section.